Good morning YouTube friends, it's uh, half past six and dark outside. I like to get up early and light the fire, have my first cup of coffee of the day. And um, just maybe just take stock before I start on my busy day, I've got quite a busy day today, which is the way I like it. Keeping warm is a priority now, in the middle of November. I've got a bit of knitting in this basket here, so I'm just going to do another row. Let's see, where am I? I'm making a blanket in the interest of keeping warm for my latest grandchild. I had hoped to get this ready for when I went down to visit them in London, but sadly, uh, despite doing some marathon knitting sessions on it, it wasn't finished. Blankets are big, aren't they? <laughs> this one's a mitered square blanket. I've made these before. I really enjoy mitered squares. Let's get myself untangled, there we go. So I enjoy a mitre square blanket, I'll show it to you. It's um, lots of lovely colours. But not big bright bold colours, and quite subtle I think. And what I'm doing at the moment is, um, where, is where is it, I'm putting an edge on it. And I'm knitting an edge all the way around uh, and I could pick up the stitches and go all the way around but I haven't got a long enough circular needle for that so I'm doing one edge then another edge then another edge and someone's come along to <laughs> enjoy the fire with me and uh, this is Cat Rita and you don't often see her in videos in the past I've had a number of cats and this is the last of my cats now and she's been very unwell lately but actually she's fine now I've been giving her some really really decent food and um, cat milk and treats and lots of strokes I brush her every night and I think she's really responding to being the only cat
Yes, she does like to do this, which means the knitting's off the agenda for a little moment. Yes, I know, you can push my hand all you like, but I'm stroking you already. Not with two hands, you aren't. I like to wake early. You know how people say, are you a lark or an owl? Meaning, are you a morning person or an evening person? And in that analogy, I'm most definitely a lark. Because um, for me, nine o'clock is uh, bedtime. And half past nine is a late night for me. <laughs> Especially in the winter. And now it's dark at four o'clock in the afternoon here. And I'm just recovering from a cold. You might be able to hear it in my voice. I'm fine. But uh, I've been a bit... Um, full of head cold for the last few days. Definitely recovering from that now. So this morning, before I got started on the day, uh, I was just checking a few comments on my YouTube channel. Now I've got my YouTube channel, my garden channel, my Instagram, my Patreon channel and the website and all of these um, bring with them comments from lovely people asking all sorts of questions and sometimes they're a little bit too much to uh, for Anna and I. Anna's my daughter-in-law and she helps me with everything that I do here at the last homely house and Rita also but Rita lives in London so we do a lot of our, our work uh, via Zoom chats and FaceTime and phone calls and emails. But Anna comes to work here three days a week. She's due in later, actually. And um, she and I and Rita try and get to as many of the comments as we can. But sometimes it's just a bit hard to get to them all, and I love them. They're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you're so thoughtful and generous uh, in the way that you support me here. But there's one particular comment that I got this morning and I went down a big old rabbit hole with it to answer it. And it's a comment that I've got over the years of quite a few times because I've had this channel going now for over six years. And when I named the channel, um, I didn't really think too hard about it. I didn't imagine that um, six years later I'd still be sitting here saying hello to you guys. And have a you know a hundred and eighteen thousand of you sitting on my lime green sofa. More of which later. But uh, I think quite a lot of my viewers, you people, uh, are from all over the world, um, and a lot of people don't understand what the word homely means in the last homely house. And in some parts of the world, homely actually means plain or ugly. And the word that they would use would be homey. And so somebody who just wrote that, it's actually a comment on the dressing gown post, because I'm wearing my dressing gown that I made. I wear it every day. And you know, I still haven't added pockets to it. I absolutely must add pockets to it. Because while I'm sitting down with a cat on my knee, I don't need pockets. But when I'm round and about, I really do. So, this person had written, thank you. Uh, but surely you mean homey, not homely. Uh, and so, sometimes I let that comment go because I have a very short answer to it. But this time I thought I would actually do a little bit of uh, going down the rabbit hole. So I did some Googling, uh, that good old um, uh, investigative tool Google. And I asked Google, you know, about the difference between homey and homely. And it definitely is a, a, a lost in translation across the Atlantic uh, uh, thing. Because that L that travels backwards and forwards across the Atlantic in both directions if it's in the word, it me in the UK it means safe and warm and cosy and welcoming, and in the US it means uh, ugly and um, uh, plain. 
and, and, and it's a, an insult. So I went back and back and back because for those of you who've been here for a while, I've explained a number of times why the channel's called The Last Homely House. Let's have a bit more coffee before it goes cold. Oh, perfect. And I'm a big fan of um, Tolkien and The Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Way before they were films by Peter Jackson. And The Hobbit was the first proper book I read to myself. Um, outside of school, I read for pleasure, and I was quite young, about ten, and I, and I read The Hobbit. And it made a big impression on me, and then I read The Lord of the Rings, and then when the films came out, I got very uh, interested in watching them. And so, the, um, so Tolkien, Professor Tolkien, was a professor of Old English and Languages at Oxford University. And um, so I kind of think that if he uses a word... It's going to be the right word. I think he did know what he was talking about. And what Tolkien, how he uses the word, he's describing the place uh, in the books that's called Rivendell, which is where uh, our hero hobbit Bilbo uh, longs to go to, to rest and feel safe and comfortable and be nurtured. And he, Gandalf says this, he says... Uh, uh, here we are in the last homely house east of the sea and that's what my channel was called for a few years the last homely house east of the sea and I dropped the east of the sea bit because it's quite a long thing to write and it still means the same thing if you lose the east of the sea so the last homely house is what it became and now I don't even think about its meaning when I say it now it's just so um, obviously what my channel is and so I think that if it means something different for you, wherever you are in the world, I'm actually going to stick by what Professor Tolkien said and how the word, the way that he used the word, and proudly say that my my little cottage here in the north of England is the last homely house east of the sea. It means comfort and warmth and safety and nurturing. Which brings me on to the lime green sofa, which is something that I just invented one time when I was talking to you guys, especially during that whole pandemic time, which was like a terrible time in the world, wasn't it, of isolation and loneliness. And it seemed to me that, and it was my daughter Martha who first uh, came up with this idea. She said, Mum, you've got a lot of people who are watching you all over the world who are perhaps feeling disconnected from family. And she said, you know, you could, you could create a, 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 a more um, meaningful community. Oh, what a lovely thing. She's a great girl. And so the lime green sofa then is this virtual place. It's lime green because that's one of my favorite colors. And I always imagined one day I would have a, a velvet lime green sofa. But with four cats in the house at the time, that was not possible. When they all use them as a scratching post, don't they? And so the lime green sofa then is this place in your head where when you're watching The Last Homely House or when you're on the Facebook group, which is a huge group of over 6,000 people are all joining together there to share their crafts and to share their their warmth and generosity and their love uh, over there on Facebook. The admins will welcome you warmly. You, I think the code word, I don't use Facebook, but I have some lovely admins who look after Facebook. And I think the code word you need is my grandchildren's names, at least two of them. So if you keep watching this video long enough, I might say them both. I think everyone knows Agnes, my granddaughter. There's another one now. Anyway, um, what was I saying? The lime green sofa. It's a place of comfort where you can sit when you're watching these videos or any time at all. Because there's always going to be the right kind of snack or drink within easy reach. The cushions are always soft and comfortable. Uh, there's a footstool if you need one. 
If you want a virtual cat to pet, there is one. Dogs are welcome if they're well behaved. And so the lime green sofa uh, becomes whatever you want it to be all around the world. And I love it. I absolutely love it. And so I, f I think of it as my comment section. So if you're down in the comments there and you see a comment from someone else who's saying something a bit like you want to say, then you get in there and answer it. And you get in there and make virtual friends with these people who are sitting next to you on the sofa. I think it helps us to feel less isolated. It certainly does me. I mean, I live here in the middle of nowhere, very rurally, very remote from anyone. And, uh, and I feel very connected to all of you and, um, and my wonderful community. So I'm sorry if I can't get to all your comments. I read as many as I can. And um, I post to Instagram and that generates a lot of comments. Just lately I haven't posted to Instagram because it would have just been pictures of boxes of tissues and packets of lemsip <laughs> and so uh, and de definitely lots more hot water bottles but I'm on the mend now I think today's the first day I felt properly well so it's uh, just coming up to seven o'clock soon and as I say Anna's due in in a few hours time and so I've got the most blissful spot here with this beautiful little cat on my knee And a gently busy day ahead of me. Not too busy, just gently busy. A few things to, to do today. Well, I've got those shortbreads in the oven now because I'm expecting a visitor. A little while ago, I wrapped up all the quilts for the Project Linus um, rep who's coming this afternoon. Now, I've made a playlist of all the Project Linus quilts that I'm going to be handing over to her today. So we've got um, 
for, well that one's three little quilts, this is the Irish chain, this is the uh, pinwheel, and the St Louis 16 patch, and then the um, wonky star. So I've wrapped them all up for her, and I'm looking forward to meeting her, and I thought it would be really nice if she had a few little chocolate chip shortbreads to eat, and I forgot to put the chocolate chips in until the very end. But while they're cooking, I wanted to revisit a project that I started, embarrassingly, it was probably a year ago, maybe even longer. I wanted another English paper piece project, and Agnes now has a baby brother, and so I was going to make a quilt for him. And it was always going to be English paper pieced, and it's the plus quilt which is a really lovely quilt. Now last time when I made Agnes's quilt I didn't tell her parents I was making it and I didn't consult them I just made it uh, with those hexagons uh, that big colour wash of blues and greens and purples and that quilt is now finished but this time I thought I would actually talk to Martha and Adam the parents and ask them what they thought uh, what they would like me to make. Uh, so I've made all these pluses. I'm just going to get them all out here and move that to one side. So I made a lot of pluses. I made a lot of them in these amazing free spirit fabrics. Uh, all the range that I like of the three designers that I absolutely love and I made a lot of patterned ones. And then I made a lot of plain ones in Kona solids, uh, all uh, sort of uh, toning in. Well, they don't tone in, do they? Some of them clash amazingly. But I made a lot of those. And I still have a lot of this fabric left to make some more pluses, I see. But then one time when the, uh, they were visiting me, Adam and Martha were visiting me, I showed them all of this and I said, would you like to have an idea about how this quilt should be? Now you've met Adam when I went to visit him at his studio at the Baltic uh, Centre for Contemporary Arts in Gateshead. Uh, he was talking to me, wasn't he, about the book of th Kate's Book of Things that we made for the Christmas boxes and we went to visit his studio. Now Adam's an amazing artist, uh, an amazing graphically uh, aware person and his colours are bold and simple and very um, one colour. So when I gave them this big load of pluses to play with, Adam laid, I said, I gave him a big box of pins, I said Adam laid them all out on the design board and he just chose the plain colours. And so I started to sew together what he'd laid out. And this is the design he likes with the colours like this and then Martha came along and she said oh well we'll have to have a pattern thrown in there every now and then just so that um, it just looks a little bit different and not just one uh, one plain load of colours and so I looked at the, what they'd done and I just then thought what am I going to do with all these because I have made rather a lot of these very very colourful pluses. So back to the drawing board <laughs> and what I'm going to do is think of a different thing maybe to do with these. I think they will choose like that one for instance uh, is um, this one is a bubble stripe from my favourite designer Brandon Mabley and I think that one when you look at the layout here would fit in beautifully with what I'm doing. So every now and then we're going to be allowed to put um, a pattern in, but as long as we keep the plain colours all coming together, it's going to be a very sort of crayon box type of quilt, this one, and not at all what I was imagining. So I might just pin them onto the board because that might look quite good. But then I've got a lot of these. So it's interesting to look into this basket actually. What have we got in here? Because as I say, it's been a long time since I looked in here. So let's see, what have we got? We've got loads of patterned ones here. And then we've got the units for more of these blocks. 
and we've got a lot of the um, cutouts to make loads more of these individual plus pieces to then sew together into the pluses. Now, Agnes's quilt took me three years. I don't mind if this quilt takes me three years. But I do have another grandchild who was born this summer and I'm making a, a quilt for her as well. And that's an English paper piece quilt. And I'll show you that another time because um, that one is, uh, well, I won't tell you about it. I'll show you that another time. But that one I think is really rather uh, a lovely, more of a girly quilt maybe. But this one is going to be more of a, um, well, I'm not going to say it's a boy's quilt. It's just a quilt, isn't it? But I've got all of these now and I feel very much like getting these back out again so that I can make a start on um, catching up with this project. It's been too long that it's been sitting in these baskets. So I'm going to put some on the board now and see what these uh, made blocks look like. Continuing Adam's design. see now that I've put a fair few more up that these bold colours, plain colours, are actually going to look rather lovely. It wouldn't have been a design choice I'd have made but I do like it. And this is by no means the way that it will be laid out when I start to piece it together. But it's good to see, after all this time, what they look like. Oh, that's the shortbread ready. I'll stop doing this now and go and get that out of the oven. And so Liz has arrived, she's the Project Linus rep and uh, it's really nice to see you and I've made you some biscuits Thank you so and much. a cup of tea. Let me put your tea where you can reach it, okay. that's your cup. And um, so I made Project Linus quilts because my mum used to. When uh, So my mum died maybe, I don't know, about four years ago now yes. and she made dozens of Project Linus quilts in her time, right. absolutely dozens, for West Lancashire. I was going to say, yeah, which area, yes. Yeah, that's, right. that was her rep yes, there. Yes. And so when I started to think about uh, doing these in her memory, um, then I got in touch with you and I realised that our sons know each other, which yeah, is nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's quite yeah. a small world, isn't yeah, it? It is. So how did you get into doing Project Linus? Um, how I got into it, uh, I've been the coordinator for Northumbria since 2014. Oh, um, it was really through the Quilters Guild. Ah. Um, I was, I've been a member for a long time of the Guild and I was a committee member for um, treasurer and events coordinator for oh, four crikey. years. Sounds very great. Uh, <laughs> it, do you know, it was wonderful. Yeah. Um, well, aren't Quilters lovely people? Yeah, I've made so many friends yeah. through it. But anyway, you're only allowed to be on the committee for seven years, so oh. eventually I got kicked off. <laughs> and um, 21. And I thought, that, and, and they were looking, Project Linus were looking for a, oh, a coordinator, right, okay. so I decided that was the right time to take Perfect. over. 
Perfect. And it coincided with me retiring. Okay. I, I used to run a, a day nursery oh, and okay. uh, we sold the business in 2014. Oh, okay. So, um, so that's how. Um, but I it, it did it in a very small way um, to begin with. Um, mostly got quilts in from Quilters Guild Regional Day right. twice a year, right. processed them delivered them and then I could forget about it for five months but um, I always wanted it to, I wanted to grow it yeah and so since 2019 um, we've had a Facebook presence Great. and that has made a huge and so difference. what region are you? Northumbria so um, I cover the right up to the Scottish border yeah. the Cumbrian border yeah. to the west um, I do parts of Gateshead and South Shields. There's somebody else does Durham and Sunderland. So you very kindly come to see me today, but how do you usually acquire your quilts? Well, um, I used to go out collecting from lots of people, and um, as well as getting them from Quilters Guild Regional Day, still get a lot mm. then because the Guild have been very supportive. Um, anyway, I recognise that a lot of the ladies who, and, and they are almost all yeah, ladies they are who make them, um, were working at home in isolation. Um, and I sense that some of them were maybe a little bit lonely. Yeah. So um, in 2019, I started yeah. renting a hall in Stunnington, oh, Stunnington okay. Village Hall, yes, and having a monthly stitch for Linus Day. Oh, how lovely. And we started off with four or five people. We've now, well, it was yesterday. We had 27 oh. yesterday. Wow. We've had as many as 30. That's amazing. Coming along with their sewing machines. And my mum would have joined that group. Uh, yeah. She uh, would, her local equivalent of that, she would have done that. Yes. So how many but, quilts a year then do you think uh, you rehome? Well, I can tell you exactly. Oh, In right. 2022... I delivered 1,652. Did you? <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. And who's the uh, recipients? Well, a lot of them go to the local hospitals, the paediatric wards. Um, there are nine paediatric wards, I think, at the RBI. Yes. Um, they are also available um, for bereavement you know so yes, yes. on the adult wards yes. as well I think they would probably go to a paediatric yeah. ward to, you know when they needed one for yeah. a bereaved uh, child or grandchild yeah. um, that's a lovely idea yes. isn't it to care yes. for yes. someone who's saddened by that yes. yeah it's a very lovely idea likewise um, uh, they go they go to two hospices one's an adult hospice so it's for yeah, the, the bereavement the services. Uh, the other one, uh, St Oswald's, have a, yeah. a children's uh, yeah. section. Oh, wow. Well. Um, that um, make, makes me feel very happy indeed. Yes. Then there's um, children with disabilities. Mm. It's, it's, it's a hug that they can keep, and yeah. it's designed to give comfort to any child who is... Um, in need of a, a special hug, whether it's because of illness, disability, well, or just generally going through a difficult time. I'm really pleased that my mum put me onto this in it's her marvelous. lifetime. Yes, absolutely. And so marvelous. you say that you need to look at these. That's fine. I quite yes. like to look at them before they go right. as well. Yes. And so what, I'll show you the first one because this one is actually three quilts. Now, I've made videos about all of these because right. that's why I like to make quilts so that yes. they end up on my videos. And so I've made a playlist on my YouTube channel so okay. that people can find their quilt on the playlist. Now, let me show you this one first of all. Do have a biscuit. Thank you. I'm They're fresh out of the oven. Out. They look delicious. <laughs> Short, chocolate yeah. chip shortbreads. The chocolate chips only made it in there in the last moment because I decided they looked a bit boring. <laughs> so this one is the... Um, Irish chain and we start with the one I made which is this one and so I don't know what you have to do to them well what I have to do is uh, I spread them out on the table at home okay and um, make sure that there are no pins or yeah. needles left in yeah okay I have found quite a few over yeah. the years well, there won't be any of these I can absolutely particularly around the the yeah, bindings the binding. yeah, no. yes um, and then um, you know check that um, well they're past the 
quality assurance. Um, well, I hope they, they don't, <laughs> don't tell me. <laughs> they, they look perfect. So, you know. well, I don't know about um, perfect. But then when I um, made that one, uh, in, in the video it's all there, I scaled down the block and made a much smaller uh, one. Uh, and yes. then I scaled it right down oh, and made a doll's quilt. <gasps> well, so, do you know, that would do for um, little premature babies. Yeah. Be because what they do is they lie them in the cot. Yeah. Put the baby on top, yeah. and it uh, it brightens up. The really humanises yes. the whole thing, doesn't we it? We get. Um, well, I had the idea that this would be um, a doll's quilt for whoever got this one, right. but you can do yeah. what you like okay. with them. So I'm guessing then you wash them all. Um, I ask people. I uh, I can and yeah. I do sometimes. Right. Yeah, okay. If people if the um, they should be washed when they're finished. If the fabrics have not been pre-washed. Yeah. If people have a pet, yeah, yeah. Um, or if there's a smoker in the house, oh, no, 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 then no, no, no. It, it, well, they they should be washed. Yes. So but there's if, those three yes, there yes. then, which are like a set, but you can split right. them up. That's they fine. Are fabulous. Yes. Oh, good. Lovely. You don't have to do the compliments. It's fine. <laughs> I like them very much, but that's not why I've done them. I've done them in memory of my mum. Yeah. So if we do them in the order I made them, this is the next one, and this is a Saint Louis sixteen patch. There. Oh, I've never heard of that. Oh, it's a lovely block, and there's a video all about it. And this is fabric from a, a, a designer called uh, Heather Ross. Oh, that's and I gorgeous. bought the yeah. pattern fabric on a bit of a whim. Yes. Uh, and then I paired it up with um, some Kona solids. And in fact, this is a very bright quilt. I think it it's going to suit a very boisterous, it's, uh, it's, sick it's person. Super, yeah. Yes. So that one's that. There's no pins, I promise. No. Okay. This one is um, a pinwheel. Yes. Quilt there. And that's um, sorry. Lots of lovely lavenders. Oh, and, that's. Yeah, are the that's sizes okay? They are fine. Good, absolutely excellent. Fine. So that's we a... we give them to children from newborn premature babies right up to nineteen years. Yeah. So anything from you yeah. know that okay. prem baby size yeah. up to a well, single bed size. Oh, it's good to know size. about the prem baby ones because yes. I might make a few more of them. Yes. They're very quick and easy to make. And the final one in this batch, because I've not made my last quilt for you, I'm definitely going to keep going. Yeah. Is this wonky star? Ah, which right, I made yes. this one I just made a, a week or two back Beautiful. and that one yes. and I like to hand quilt. Hand, I was going to say hand, the hand quilting makes them lovely and soft yeah um, I just yes. like my mum oh, and I like your piece backing oh as yeah well. a bit of yeah. a pieced backing that's going great. on there that's right yes so there you are I um like I say, there's videos about all of these, and if the people who, if you want to see, or if the people who get them want to see, yes, then um, maybe um. <laughs> they could check out the that's last fantastic one um you ask what I, how i check them and what oh, i do do we um, have a label we on also it now? um i if i'm taking these away i'll so, stitch these okay. on but i'll leave some labels oh, with you for future reference. that's great okay then so uh, maybe i haven't got any more project line line squirts in on the go at the minute but maybe there will be in, some in the in future I'd, l I'd love to do Super. that thank and you. keep my mum's legacy going that's so lovely so thank you yes. so much thank you my pleasure. Thank you. So Liz has gone now. I really enjoyed meeting Liz. The biscuits were very good, by the way. There's a couple left for my supper. And so now that this um, plus quilt has been given so, uh, some air and a new lease of life, I'm actually going to sit and stitch on this in the evenings. It's going to be my new television knitting. And I'm just going to stitch these pluses together. I really like how they tessellate together. Uh, it's really clever how they come together like that. So I did wonder how it would be sewing the bigger quilt together. With Agnes's quilt, it got to be quite unwieldy. Because when I'm English paper piecing, and this is my personal preference for sure, I leave the papers in till the end because I think it gives the whole work structure so that the seams don't fight against each other. And so I, I wonder how I'm going to get on with this one when I have to twist and turn it to get these pluses into place. And so I'm going to sew on this for a little while and make some supper. And then 
that's going to be the end of my day. I'm looking forward to doing a little bit of knitting later on. that video thank you for watching give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it leave a comment if you want to and I will see you next time here at the last homey house with something else take care everybody